name is Janice Ma. I am a fourth year medical student at the Mayo Clinic School of Medicine in Rochester, Minnesota. Our article is entitled Clinical Features, Etiologic Factors, Associated Disorders, and Treatment of Palmoplantar Pustulosis, the Mayo Clinic Experience, 1996 to 2013. This article will appear in an upcoming issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Palmoplantar pustulosis, or PPP, is a chronic relapsing pustular eruption localized to the palms and soles that can become painful and disabling. These lesions can appear as discrete and sometimes coalescing pustules mixed in with brown macules on a background of erythema. Involved areas of the palms and soles are typically well demarcated, bilateral, and often symmetrical. The yellow pustules can evolve into brown macules with resulting collarettes of scale. In this retrospective study, we identified 215 patients at our institution diagnosed with PPP, making this the largest case series on this disease to be published in over four decades. The majority of patients in our cohort were female, and the mean, mean age of diagnosis was 45 years old. Additionally, the majority of patients had involvement of both their palms and their soles. Approximately 40% of patients had biopsy-proven PPP. There were several important findings from our study which have practical clinical implications for providers caring for patients with PPP. In terms of causes of PPP, over three quarters of patients were current or former smokers, and 9% of patients were considered drug-induced, mostly by TNF-alpha therapy. The high frequency of smoking history among PPP patients in our cohort reinforces the importance of counseling these patients on smoking cessation. Additionally, thoroughly reviewing medication lists for common culprits such as TNF-alpha inhibitors in patients suspected of having this disease is also paramount, especially given the widespread use of TNF-alpha inhibitors in the treatment of a variety of different commonly encountered conditions including rheumatoid arthritis as well as inflammatory bowel disease. In terms of comorbidities, 10% of patients had type 2 diabetes, 8% had thyroid disease, and 1% had gluten sensitivity. Gluten sensitivity and thyroid disease were found less frequently than previously reported in literature. Our findings suggest that patients with PPP may not need routine screening for systemic disorders, though subsequent studies are needed to further evaluate this relationship. Treatment for this disorder is especially challenging. Most of the patients in our cohort utilize topical corticosteroids. Approximately one quarter of the patients required oral medications such as acetretin and methotrexate in order to control their disease. Due to previously reported associations between PPP and patch testing, we also investigated the patch test results of patients in our cohort. We found that only a minority of our patients, or 10%, underwent formal patch testing. Of the 10% of patients that underwent patch testing, approximately 90% had a positive patch test result to at least one allergen. However, the majority of the positive patch test results were deemed to be of questionable or no relevance to the PPP by the dermatologists. We hope our study's findings spur further research on PPP. Larger prospective studies are warranted to make conclusive recommendations regarding screening for systemic diseases and effective treatments for patients afflicted with PPP. Thank you so much for your time. We hope you find our article interesting and educational. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.